Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Sing, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Sing, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. Sing, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt you paid from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing, Lord, I lift. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you're in my life. Sing, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came to save us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
why don't you just begin to lift up your voice and begin to bless the Lord begin to thank him for being on the cross begin to give him all the praise and all the honor come on TBC lift up your voice and begin to worship him begin to thank him for his, his nail pierced hands begin to thank him for the blood that he shed we thank you we're gonna start off with thank you
death could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice for us on the cross. Father, be thou magnified. Lord, be thou glorified. Some of the lift your voice this morning and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Begin to thank him and appreciate him for his sacrifice for you and myself on the cross. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for dying for our sins, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for cleansing us, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for coming to redeem us, Lord Jesus. Lord, we are grateful. Father, be magnified, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Some of the lift your voice and begin to thank him. Begin to appreciate him. Begin to give him the best of your worship this morning. Father, be magnified. Ratelosh kaduza lepandos. Ilavandosh kaduza lebrandosh kadaba. Alavandosh kaduza lependosh kaduza lezandos. Oh Lord, we are grateful. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, be magnified this morning in the name of Jesus. Razelosh kata. Ilavandosh kaduza lepandos. For whilst we were yet sinners, whilst we were yet sinners you died for us lord you saw the best in us and you came to die for our sins lord we are grateful lord we appreciate you we give you all the praise lord jesus be thou exalted oh god be thou magnified oh god lord we thank you in jesus name very quickly this morning can i have second corinthians 5 verse 15 it says and he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again 
It says he died for all. So we understand that one of the reasons why Jesus died was to liberate us and also to empower us to live for him. Paul says that for to me to live is Christ. So we want to pray this morning for the grace to be completely yielded to God. We want to pray that Lord by virtue of your death for me on the cross empower me to be able to live for you. Let's begin to pray this morning. Father in the name of Jesus. We have come this morning for the grace, oh God, to be yielded unto you. For to live is Christ. For you died for all that they that live should no longer live for themselves but for you. Lord, we ask this morning for the grace, oh God, to be completely yielded to you. That in everything that we do, Lord Jesus, that we will decrease for you to increase, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In la vedosh kaduza le mandaza. That it's not about us anymore, but it's all about you, Lord Jesus. It is all about you, Lord Jesus. Empower us, Lord Lord Jesus this morning empower us Lord Jesus by virtue of your death on the cross Lord Jesus may we be completely yielded unto you O oh God in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name Colossians 2 verse 15 I want us to pray and to appropriate our dominion and victories over principalities and powers it says having disarmed principalities and powers on the cross it made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it so I want us to pray that every influence of principalities and powers in our lives today it comes to an end. That by virtue of Christ's death on the cross, every influence, every power of the principalities over our lives, our finances, our marriages, our ministries, that everything that the enemy is fighting us with, that by virtue of Christ's death on the cross, it says that he, he made a public spectacle of them triumphing about them so this morning begin to appropriate your victory and dominion over every principalities and power this morning in jesus name begin to pray church declare ye that ye may be justified father by your by, by by virtue of your death on the cross we exercise our dominion we appropriate our victories over principalities and powers this morning in the mighty name of jesus we declare our freedom through christ this morning in the mighty name of jesus every principality every power fighting our destinies fighting our marriages fighting our finances today we overcome it in the name of jesus we choose to walk in our victory and our freedom through christ in the mighty name of jesus Oh Lord, by virtue of your victory on the cross, we walk in dominion, we walk in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Somebody exercise your dominion this morning. Enough of it. Father, we thank you. And finally, Isaiah 53, verse 5. It says, But it was wounded for our transgressions. It was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. We want to pray for healing in our bodies and also in every aspect of our lives. Healing simply means restoration. So we want to pray for divine restoration in every aspect of our lives, our finances, again, our marriages, and in, 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 in every aspect, that by virtue of Christ's death on the cross, it says that it became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. So we are praying that, Lord, by virtue of your death on the cross, may we receive divine restoration in Jesus' name. Let's begin to pray this morning. Razendo Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare and we receive by faith our healing in our bodies, in our souls, in our, in our spirits. Father, we receive divine restoration this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. Father, this morning we thank you. For unto you that hear us prayers, all men shall come. Father, we've come before you this morning on the day that you died for our sins. For whilst we were yet sinners, you died for us. Lord, we thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for being rich in mercy because of your love towards us. And Father, this morning we commend the service into your hands. But I will pray that you speak to us in Jesus' name. Lord, we are praying for an encounter, a visitation, an experience with you by your word. Let nobody go back the same way as they've come, Lord Jesus. And Father, I will pray that at the end of today, may we have every reason to bless your name. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. And God's people shall say a big amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Good morning, TBC. Oh no, more energy. Good morning, TBC. Amen. Thank you so much, IMG, for that powerful time in worship. On behalf of our head pastor, Pastor Kingsley PJ, Pastor Cynthia, and our resident pastor, Pastor Steve, and Pastor Mosa, I'd like to welcome you all to our Good Friday service. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen, amen. Easter is probably one of the most important events in the Christian calendar, whereby we reflect on the sacrifice of Christ, laying down his life for us and cleansing us of all of our sins. Are you grateful for Christ and for him laying his life down for us? Amen. We have a power pack service, so be sure to share the link with all of your loved ones who are not able to join with us today in the service. Also, if you have parked in the Ren car park, please note that you only have 90 minutes. So if you, once 90 minutes is up, you have to move your car again. And before I go, I'd just like to leave you with a short scripture of encouragement taken from the book of Romans, verse 31 to 34. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Who dares to accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us a right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Amen. God bless you all. Enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Can we all sing this congregational hymn to the glorification of our Lord Jesus? Shall we be on our feet? Mm, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the praise of glory died my riches came account but lost and poor contempt oh no my pride forbid it Lord that I should boast saving the death of Christ my God all the vain things that calms me most I sacrifice them to his blood He from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did a such love and sorrow meet? All thorns compose. So rich a crown Where the whole rest Of nature mine That were an offering far too small Love so amazing so divine demands my soul my life my all love so amazing so divine 
divine demands my life, my own, my life, my own. Love so amazing, so divine demands my soul, my life, my own. Amen. Jesus made seven statements at the cross and I'm reading the first four. The first lesson is taken from Luke 23 verses 34. Father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. The second lesson is taken from Luke 23 43. I tell you the truth today you will be with me in paradise. Lesson three is taken from John 19, 26 to 27. Jesus said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And lesson four is taken from Matthew 27, 46. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Amen. Can we do it once again for the King of Kings? For it is for the sake of the cross of Calvary that we are all saved this morning. Jesus, keep me near the cross. And wait, hoping, trust, 
last three statements of Jesus are the cross. Lesson 5. John 19 verses 28. I am thirsty. Lesson 6. John 19 30. It is finished. Lesson 7. Luke 22 verses 46. Father into your hands I commit my spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for the cross. We thank God for the price that he has paid for us. As I minister this song, I just want you to join me to exalt him. He's done it. And it's just once and for all. Hallelujah. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb seated on the throne. We crown you now with me. Crowns, you reign victorious. I am lifted up. Oh, Jesus, Son of God. Oh, 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 oh. We cry. 
Somebody love him and say, What is the land? Let it come from inner being because he's so worthy. Say, Worthy, worthy. Oh, 
Bosques que pela. And nothing else because the crowns before the Lamb in God is your way. is your name oh come on let's worship worthy is your name Jesus you deserve it all you deserve the praise worthy is your name Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him the fruit of your lips. Come on, we can do it better. Worthy. Worship come out. King of kings, Lord of Lords, I worship. You are worthy. You are worthy. King of kings and Lord of Lords, you are. Say King of Kings and King of Kings, Lord of Lords, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and King of Kings and Lord of Lords, I would say King of Kings and Lord of Lords and King of Kings and King of Kings and Lord of Lords and King of Kings and Lord.
delivered they left your name we left to Jesus for they not been you on the cross where would we have the King of Zion Judas Judas you reign for you are the King of Zion Give it unto the Lord. You can't visualize the cross and remain neutral. Hallelujah. I hope of late I have been through some things and I have discovered the limitless power of the cross. And as we celebrate this moment, you know, I think that we should celebrate Jesus this morning. Are, are you with me? Celebrate this at this morning. Celebrate this at this morning. You just can't afford. Celebrate this at this morning. I have been through some things. And I've seen the majesty and the glory of God. There is nothing God cannot do. The cross is the answer. The cross is the answer. The cross is the answer. And if you have met Jesus at the feet of the cross this morning, you will celebrate his goodness and mercy. There is never anybody who ever loved you like Jesus. There is no, nobody who ever will go the depths to pick you up than Jesus will do. And as we come to the Lord's table this morning, come with faith. Come with confidence. Have this standing before you like Jesus is being crucified right in front of you. And Paul could not forget this. And every time Paul had the opportunity, he said, I'm crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with Christ. I no longer live. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And I'm telling you, if Jesus did not die, hey, but we are here today. My brothers and sisters from Porter City who are with us this morning, we're going to have a communion. And I hope that by the grace of God, because we've been bought with the same blood, you will participate in this with us as we celebrate the essence and the revelation of what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. And I am asking you to come to this table with confidence, with faith. No matter what you bring to the table, God is able to meet you at the point of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. The All blood the pastors, that gives me strength, and the leaders can surround us right now. To
that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Oh, the blood, the blood that she. come to the Lord's table like I said before we come in confidence by faith examining ourselves and ensuring that we come with respect honoring the blood and the body of Christ knowing that there is potency as we meet together uh, and we, as we come to the table and to, for you to benefit from that you must come in confidence expecting you must come in repentance we approach this uh, table on the basis of grace, not on the basis of achievement. On the basis of grace, on your knees you come. Jesus went to the cross on his knees for you and I. And we approach this table not by our own strength, but by the strength of the Lord coming and saying, Lord, here I am, take me as I am and do what you want with me this morning that is how we come and everything that you come to this table with i'm telling you there is power in the blood of jesus come with expectation and god will meet you at the point of need listen to this for i receive from the lord jesus that which i delivered to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me and listen to this as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes and as you proclaim the Lord's death every benefit in that proclamation will become yours in the mighty name of Jesus therefore whoever eats and drink this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord but let a man a, a, and a woman in this contest examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup for he who eats and drinks it in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself not discerning the Lord's body but for this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And this morning, 
approach this table with confidence judge yourself and as you approach this table come in repentance and faith and as you do that the Lord will meet you at your point of need Jesus took your judgment on the cross and you approach this, this mercy seat appropriating the grace and the mercy of God the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed took bread giving thanks broke it saying this is my body broken for you do this in remembrance of me the body of Christ broken for you This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This is the cup of blessing. And in this cup, I declare over all of us the blessing of healing, the blessing of the glory of God, the blessing of the riches of God, the blessing of a sound mind, the blessing of peace, the blessing of the joy of the Lord. And as you approach this table, come and receive these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen.
benefits and the properties of the blood and the body of Christ. Pastor Sly is going to pray and release the special grace and the favor of God over your life and as you appropriate that in confidence and stand where Jesus stood for you at the mercy seat and appropriate it, I believe power is changing hands over your life in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for sending your son to us. The Bible says that through him we have eternal life. And we thank you that through your son, now Lord, Father, your people are liberated. Father, we pray that as we have eaten your body and have drank, O oh God, your blood, we pray that anyone among us who is sick, Pray for total recovery right now over their lives in the name of Jesus. From the crown of their head to the soles of their feet, we dip them in the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood will continue to speak for us, O oh God. And from now on, O oh God, to 31st of December, none of us will, O oh God, face any challenges because the battle, you have taken it and you have won it for us. We love you because you are faithful, God. And we thank you because you are with us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Shall we all say a big amen? amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. You cannot come to the Lord's table, experience the miracle of exchange, and not bless God. So we are going to take our offering at this moment. And uh, in moments like this, there is nothing that can pay for what Jesus did for us on the cross. But we also know that we need to do something to appreciate all that he did for us it is more blessed to give than to receive so if you want an emblem uh, lift up your hands and the ushers will do that for you right now uh, if you give online please uh, the details are on the screen hands are lifted here three hands here More hands, more hands. Give, and it shall be given back to you. President shaking together, overflowing. And the cross is the center of overflowing love and overflowing generosity of God. That is a picture of the cross. Shall we pray? Daddy, we thank you for this amazing grace amazing favor how you gave all you had for us that we may appropriate and enter into your blessing and as we remember this moment and as we tap into that grace and favor you brought to us may our giving flow from that center of love in Jesus name and God people will say Amen Hey. 
And we will say that you are good And all the miracles you've done has brought us joy For we are changed And all the hopes we have we place in you right now hallelujah we serve a living God in the name of Jesus today something will happen to you today I, I believe that every single one of us here today you will go home with a testimony not one of us will be left behind not one I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for coming once again God bless you and we want to acknowledge all the men of God in the house God bless you all our pastors 
from the different campuses and our different you know services here thank you for coming amen we want to also acknowledge the uk potterian volunteers who chose to worship with us uh today god bless you i i believe that god so planned it that in his calendar that would have prophet i don't think that he himself had any idea he didn't know that today god had set him here to come and for a specific assignment he's the founder of potter's prayer city in ghana and through his obedience and the grace of god potter's has become an international city in god's eyes and when you see potter's it's in the middle of some village called miocho 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 it's very difficult to even but potter's has placed miocho in the international map of the world hallelujah because one man decided to obey the lord and it is all to god's glory the only person that we know who can organize 50 days prayer fasting at a stretch 70 days 100 days 120 days and it continues to be a blessing to many all over the world and i know you know that this kind of prayer and fasting is grace the lord has to give it to you you can't replicate it god has to give you that grace and we thank the lord that that grace is upon his servant and now the lord has blessed him with another dimension of ministry the prophetic invasion in the u.s and europe amen let's put our hands together for what the lord is doing so the uk invasion has started all of those who were part of it started here yesterday powerfully and continues tonight tomorrow and sunday so if you're not here yesterday make sure you are here from today onwards what god has used our our pastor our brother to do it is not just for himself or those that he has called to in Potters, but it's for all of us it's for the kingdom of god it's for the body of christ and it is all through a life of sacrifice and he's passionate passionate about faith passionate about holiness passionate about godly marriages and so his marriage is an example i would want to say this as well that our prophet is a careful servant of god careful and he lives his life very carefully resolute to live an upright life to the glory of god a man who knows how to honor the fathers that he has placed in his life he's married to our sister lady reverend ivy she's not here this morning but wherever you are i want you to put your hands together for her hallelujah and the lord has blessed them with three children two of them are with us this weekend nana kwami and nana i just want to thank god for lady ivy she's not here but let's sound it out to her a lot of people don't know what she does behind the scenes she is a powerhouse behind the scenes managing everything that goes on at potters and one of you uh, um, lady ivy is a son of the house and a son to pastor kinsley join me in welcoming the servant of the lord for us at this moment reverend nana say please feel free flow we don't have a time limit let the lord god bless you If your neighbor is clapping harder than you, he has taken your blessing already. If your neighbor was shouting and you are quiet, tell your neighbor I have already taken your blessing because you were quiet. Today is Good Friday. Amen. What a significant day on the calendar of Christianity for the body of Christ. I want you to walk to three people with a very big smile and tell them, I love you by force. Go to three people and tell them, I love you by force. 
find three people and love them by force tell them the way you are i have made my mind i'm going to love you by force yes find love somebody by force are you sure you did that find another person more Akadabaya Rosinimi Atu Sakaya Vendelemi Katuya Azinimi Atu Say Lokazinimi Lift your right hand and pray in the spirit for just two minutes Razinimi Atu Seke Teke Prozanima Atu Saya Touch me this Good Friday Visit me this Good Friday do in my life only what you can do. I said two minutes. Open your mouth and pray. Yes, Lord. Kadima yatu say. Rakadima atu sayama. Lift your two hands and ask the Lord to give you a new testimony. Lord, thank you for the old testimony, but give me a brand new testimony. A testimony that will put fear on my enemies. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Um, the nature of my calling and the ministry God gave me has taken me through different churches to preach i don't know how many years now not no less than three decades but as i relate to pastors and different men bishops and cardinals and the only person i've not related is the pope which i'm trusting god that very soon i will do that but one of the men man of god that i have a vow covenant and feel very comfortable around with my family is dr crazy pj and mama cynthia yeah. i don't take them for granted at all hallelujah Amen. and there are some things in my life i will do it for him alone yeah. and it's a covenant the most dangerous person on earth around you is the one who doesn't have a covenant for one of the reasons why we are struggling because we are not relating to God on the basis of covenant. Sometimes it's just based on failing. I feel like coming to church and if I don't feel I stay at home. Those who have a covenant, Paul said that necessity is laid upon me but woe unto me if I don't preach the gospel. That means that it's a covenant and, and God believes in covenant. Check everybody God called in the Bible. He established a covenant with them. And this is what he said. My covenant will I not break. That means that when you go into covenant with God, it's a binding matter. God say, if there's a problem, it will be you. But me, I will never break my covenant. And so, I want to salute uh, Papi. I call him Papa. And then I want to salute Mommy. Um, I think Mommy is my wife's mentor and favorite woman. Hallelujah. Anytime, anytime the girl in the hair comes out and he does something, I say, This doesn't look like Pastor C. Then he will just check herself and then back off. And interesting, both of them come from some part of Ghana. And me and Daddy too come from some part of Ghana. So it's no coincidence at all. Hallelujah. We call them the Infanti Configuration. Amen. We'll talk about that later. But don't tell them I told them. Don't tell them I, I said that. Amen. And this is one of the most beautiful church. Amen. Um, this is one of the few churches that I can preach when the father is not there. 
both Ghana and London. Daddy doesn't need to be there for me to preach. And once a man can be out and give you the opportunity to preach, let's welcome my brother from the other mother, Pastor Paul and Pastor Joe. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesus. So God richly bless you. I'm going to be very brief. And then, um, how many of you were not here yesterday? Lift your hands. And you can't lie in church, please. This is, if you lie, it's no good Friday. It's very dangerous. Lift your hand. How many of you are not here on Friday? Those of you, you look at them and say, where were you? Ask them, where were you? Lift your hand so that we can see you and ask you, where were you? And what were you doing at home? For what? Amen. Now, let me tell you something. Let me give you three reasons why you have to be here this evening. Number one, you have to always come to God and believe God to give you something money cannot buy. This evening, God is going to distribute things that money cannot buy. I have a friend. He's a very wealthy man. By any standard, one of the richest men in Ghana. He's a very good Christian. And sometimes he can do something very, very embarrassing. This man can meet me in the market, get out of from one of these is post car, and kneel down and lift his hand. Sometimes airport. I mean, strange places. The moment you see me, oh, Papa, then you will know that everybody will be watching. And the way you do it, you can't say you won't pray for him. <laughs> so one day I asked him, I say, Openi, these things you have been doing, if you meet me at some corner somewhere, it's fine. But those, he say, and I said, why do you do that? And I was shocked by his answer. He said, Papa, God has blessed me. And the reason everywhere I meet you and I know that I said, the anointing is the only thing my money cannot buy. Have you seen the way people's mind work? It, 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 it stayed with me. He said, that is the only thing my money cannot buy. And that is why anytime I meet you, I trust God. This if we come for something, we come to UK sometimes once in a year. Once in a year. And you don't need to mix it for anything. Tell your neighbor, money cannot buy anointing. Tell them. It's very important. You have to come. Because when we come to church like this morning, we are not just in church. We have come to Mount Zion. In the spirit realm, the description of church is totally different from what you see. He said, we have come to Mount Zion. This place is called the city of God. In the spirit, it's heavily Jerusalem. And number two, we are worshipping with innumerable company of angels. So, the angels that are in this room are, oh, those of you are clapping, you are ready for a miracle. That's what it is. You can close with this one. That is one of the most dangerous things the devil has succeeded in doing. And thank God, and thank God, as I'm preaching, if I'm online, somebody's watching me from America, somebody's watching me from somewhere, I'm not too sure, but all over the world, I have seen people come from protests from India and Iran. All over the world. They come from strange places. Dubai. And they come. But then, one of the things the devil has done that is dangerous is if you become addicted as an online Christian and you don't go to church. Because Christianity is not designed for that. Forsake not the assemblies of your gathering. Now listen. If you become addicted online Christian, you don't go to church. Satan is isolating you to destroy you. Because when we come together like this, a lot of things happen that your mind cannot explain it. They grow from strength to strength. Those who appear before the Lord. So if they don't appear, they become weak. I can close with this one. Amen. Amen. So don't sit down. And sometimes, uh, this is the thing. All this social media platform we are using, it belongs to Babylon. You are not serious. Let me go to these people here and try and see what I do. I say all these things, they belong to... Have you noticed that as the church is fighting, the church cannot even come together and get our own satellite. That's right. One day they will tell us that, don't, for instance, the messages I preach, that I preach about holiness, they've deleted all of them on YouTube. Deleted all of them. Anything you talk and you talk about why Martin is marrying Albert, they get angry. They delete it. I, I mean, forget about it. I'm just talking about 
Martin, they are not here. They are in Ghana. Don't, don't worry. They are not here. They deleted all of them. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah, but the church is sitting and the church is not thinking about all these things. Think about it. We are not even coming together. One day they can shut everything down and say, nobody, what is going to happen to you? Wouldn't it be nice that all the churches in the UK come together, we have our own Facebook or something that we are beaming through. But the church is not doing that. There's one prayer Jesus prayed for the church has not been answered. Father, let them be one even as we are one. We are divided. Kill one another, chastise one another, gossip one another. Oh, Jesus. Look at me, but I know you have been gossiping about me. Tell the person I know. Even right now, you are talking about my dress in your head. And after that, tell them, tell them, so that when they talk, it doesn't become an issue. And especially those who didn't tell you anything, they are the real gossipers. You know, sometimes it's frightening. Eh? When I'm ministry and they we're talking about blessing and people are coming to receive anointing for blessing, I get bothered. And one of the things I get bothered is that much as we want blessing, can we handle one another's blessing? That's right. We have a problem. Because if God starts blessing us, he's not going to bless all of us. I mean, start. some are going to take lead, some are going to come. Somebody say, if you see God blessing your neighbor, he's in the neighborhood. That's right. So you might be the next person is coming. That's right. Gossip somebody pack a new car, they say, hey, Then whose car is this? It's for Jay. Hey, where did you get money from? Is your money missing? <laughs> that is the way we behave. Am I, am I telling the truth? We cannot handle one another's blessing. Pastors cannot handle one another's favor. Some pastors cannot handle another pastor's grace. And no pastor operated by grace because they bought it. What I'm standing here doing, it's not democracy, it's a calling. It's a calling. You didn't vote me to do. You didn't vote Mama C. You didn't vote Dr. King said, Pastor Musa. Pastor Sla. You didn't vote. It's a calling. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. By this time, I will be like a structure engineer. Yes. And I sat in Ghana and wrote my examination that time to be a structural engineer. The only place you can write from is from Britain. City and Girls of London. I wrote it on White Man Market and told me I've passed. <laughs> I didn't even see the paper. I didn't see what he marked, but he just sent it to me. And that's what it is. I could have been there, but God called me. When God called me, one of my uncle looked at me and said, listen, you don't even look like a pastor. Because I was very slim. He said, Look at that. And you compare me to the present pastor. I said, Have you seen the present pastor? has has belly. He's very nice. Look at you. Can God call a man like you? Oh, yes. That is why I'm trying to develop my. But still, it's not coming. Because that thing has never. And I'm determined that because of my uncle said, One day I'll have a pot belly. Just to defy my uncle's. Uh, it's a calling. Don't be a face. You will become weak. So this even be here. Now hear this. Be here. Be here. The reason is that there is a woman who has an issue of blood. Right. Among the things that the Bible says, he spent all his money on physicians. From Kim George Hospital to Kim James Hospital. If this one can, they transfer you here. Then they transfer you there. Then they transfer you there. Thank God for medical science. But if they don't have the solution, they pronounce death sentence. Faith never pronounced death sentence. Never. Faith walked to cemetery and saw somebody who is dead rotting for this and faith called. Jesus told Martha, did I not tell you that if thou can believe, if only you believe, you see the glory of God. And so the reason why God wants us to anoint, get anointed on the day of Pentecost, say, Taddy, don't move until you are endowed with power from above. That the price you pay to prevent is less than the price you pay to kill. So me, instead of waiting for trouble to come for me to go to God, I want trouble to come and meet me with God. Good one. And that is why you become committed. You are hungry for anointing. So those of you who are hungry for impartation, come. Yesterday we started. Mama C was here. People receive breakthroughs. 
Yes, there was a man. This one is a gentleman who came to Portes to fast. There is no difference between Portes and Trinity, but it's the same. I mean, as far as why, why is a gentleman? There, there's a man. I think he's a Porterian. Eh? Yeah, he's coming in the evening. I, I don't even. I think he's not in this church. He has diabetes for 21. Is it 21 years? He said or 20 years? 20 years diabetes. Taking medication, he came to Portes during spiritual foundation. Stayed there for 14 days of fasting. Came back, and everything has left his body. The doctor said, what happened to you? We can't find a thing. Medical science can treat. Only God can cure. You are so not serious. Let me go back to where I left. So come and receive something. It's a spiritual electricity. Can you see wire fire? Can you see it? But does it work? It's the same thing. Wire fire is like spiritual things. That is how it, that's the way I can explain it. Is that how you call it? Is it wildfire? Wildfire, whatever. If I'm from Ghana and my pronunciation is different from you. Wildfire, whatever. Can I call it wire fire? That's how we call it. Yes. It's, 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 it depends. Wire fire. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you noticed that once you come here, you sometimes I don't even know where the modem is. Is that what they call it? But it has a way of just so spiritual things uh, you can be sitting in a church and God has taken sickness out of your body. God has free your fallopian tube. God has taken that fibroid. God has healed you or something. Impending danger. Amen. What the devil is calculating something is satanic incubated. Right. The Lord just eliminates it. Right. So you shall serve the Lord your God. He will bless your bread and your water. He will take sickness away from the midst of you. Nothing shall cast your young. So in church, premature death can be cancelled. And that is why the devil wants you to stay at home. He doesn't want you to come to church. No. God has never, 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 never read your Bible very carefully. God has never accepted or encouraged excuses. Jesus Christ threw a party and asked some people to come. Some of them said, I've just married a wife. I bought a lot. Jesus said, don't mind them. Go to the town and compare people. Forget about them. Those who were not, it means that those who were invited with excuses were rejected. And those who were minding their business, not even qualified for the table, God brought them. Hear this. Hear this. Sitting here in Trinity, let me tell you. Every calling of God is a high calling. But let me tell you the dangers of calling. God always has a substitute for everybody here. call you to do if you refuse to do it god is raising another person he shocked somebody in the bible look at the way let me tell you the way your mindset can be sitting in church it's the mindset of elijah prophet elijah said they've killed all your prophet i'm the only one left that was his mindset let's assume obedeah has even 700 god didn't even go to 700 when god wanted to replace him he went to a farmer He was shocked. That is why he never conducted that anointing service. Go and anoint Elisha to take your place. Anoint Jehu, anoint Hesse. He didn't do it. There is no record that Elijah anointed Elisha, anointed Jehu, anointed Hesse because he was shocked. He couldn't believe God can replace him. Yeah. Yeah. Among the prayers that God didn't answer, one of them was his prayer. It's not every prayer in the Bible God answered. 400 and something prayers were answered. Some of them, 60 something hours not answered. Elijah was one. I am not better than my fathers. Kill me. God didn't kill him. Because he was not made to die. He was not made to taste death. She was praying a prayer contrary to his destiny assignment. Be careful what you are praying. If God will answer all the prayers you pray, you will not be alive. Under pressure and stress. I am not better than my father. You are supposed to be carried to heaven by the chariot of fire. Because coming back to the mountain of transfiguration, you must not taste death. That is why nobody knows the grave of Moses. Nobody knows the grave of Elijah. Because you are going to come back. You are going to come back. You are not going to die. You are not supposed to taste death. Hello? Are you alive? Because this week, I don't know why God brought us here. 
Every reason we're not supposed to, but God said, go, you have to go. Huh? You don't go until you are sent. No, because people think that when you listen, some pastors think that crossing to countries to do program is, is like a fan. No, you cross through territorial demons and you deal with different principalities. The principalities of Britain has moved from analog to digital. It's not a, the Ghana one, they are just uh, hungry demons. So. These ones, they are very complicated. The most dim, dangerous spirit to deal with spirit that are intelligent. And spirits that are intellectuals. They don't know it. A witch that has not gone to school. He only, he only caused one bicycle accident and everybody's fine. People used to be afraid of fetish priests that are wearing rafa. Is that rafia they call it? And you are waving at this. Sure. You are dealing with people with secret society who are professors. No, professor in, in sociology and uh, uh, psychology mixed with uh, which one? A Greek philosopher. And he's also, he's also the, you know the witchy, the dangerous ones are those who are wearing suit. If you are not clapping, I really suspect you, pal. Very suit, walking very majestically. A wearing suit. A friend went to Northern Region somewhere to go and do is it national service, and they took him to a very sophisticated chief. The chief was he was an MD or something. He was a big man in you know now so most of the chief they they have companies like. They are not just the, your, you know your hometown chief the way he's struggling. We are not talking about that kind of yeah, but they are chief like <laughs> uh, yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> they are different. Tell your neighbor they are different. My hometown chief yeah. Uh, me my hometown chief has sold some two land. We are even looking for him some two <laughs> two plot of land. We are looking for him. You well, can't compare him to the Asante. So he went there, greeted the man, shook the man's hand, and immediately something left the man. And so you could see as if something is traveling in San something. And my friend spoke in tongues, cut deep, I had to carry Jesus, and the thing returned. And the man said, mm, You have power, I'll add more to it for you. <laughs> that is what I told my friend. Yeah. When we say pray, you, you are not conscious about anointing, all you are doing is to speak British, British accent. <laughs> who said the devil is a, who, who, do, do Some of you think Satan is an Englishman. <laughs> no. The devil is not an English. He doesn't speak English. He, he, he doesn't even like English people at all because of the way they speak English. No, I'm telling you. When, it, when, when you cross over to deal with it, what you need is power. power. Oh, come on here. What did I say? What do you need? Power. What did you need? Power. And between now and Sunday, may the Lord empower you. Amen. Yesterday, I picked a lady and I was talking about his wedding. I'm not sure he's here. And I was talking about, I said, you did a very flamboyant wedding. And he said it to confirm it. I see it. But in the wedding, when God opened my heart, I saw three people making enchantment and they shut her womb. Just yesterday, God opened it. So they can come to your wedding and shut your womb. Because once, whatever vows are exchanged, other vows can come tight. So this generation, they don't want to accept spiritual things. No. No, he, he confirmed it here. Yeah. That means that you was preparing for a big wedding. No spiritual investment of prayer. My wife and I, we did 21 days fasting dry before we came to the pulpit. I told her, I said, hey, you are not doing a wedding. You are breaking a generational curse. I am the first person to do a wedding in my family. Out of my grandfather, was 58 children. So I told him, I said, no, my uncle that tried first. When the wedding car was moving, he had an accident and paralyzed. He couldn't even taste his wife. He was hung. They, he was a big man in the company, those the VRA. So they have to put him on some kind of brought him to abroad. I don't know whether it's Britain. And I was the second. Huh. And all you do is a honey. What is the party? How many people are coming? I even described his wedding guy. Did you see me? I show it yesterday. I showed the length of the guy. God showed me the length. It was from there to here. Yeah. If somebody is a witch by you, ask him, they will tell you. I mean, Amen. Look at your neighbor and say you are a suspect. <laughs> huh? What did you say? Did I say something? What did I say? 
A suspect that's only you are in it. We are only investigating the matter. When we finish, we'll come up with a report. Get spiritual. I can close. I'll finish preaching. What else do you want me to add again? I'm just encouraging you that get, 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 get power. The kingdom of God is not in West. No. You can, be, you can have three degrees, three master's degrees, and Satan will kick your body with one thing. There is nothing painful like the doctor you trust to start speaking what you don't want to hear. God, that is what you have trusted. We have prayed God by God's grace. God has used us to minister to people. We have even prayed for people who didn't have womb. And God replaced the womb. One day I was ministering and somebody didn't have a womb. And I told God, I can't pray for such a person. The wisdom God gave me, he didn't quote a scripture. I said, All the automobile companies, when they do automobile, they have spare parts. If man in his wisdom can have a spare part, I, God, that created the body, can't I have spare part? Amen. That is a revelation I stood to pray for them. But those things you want to hear from God, you can't even quote a scripture. You have to pick it prophetically. Tell your neighbor you are too intellectual. Tell the person you are too intellectual. And I, I, I just finished Oxford. I did accounting and masters. I want to go to Harvard and do another one. And I'm also trying to feather my cows. Keep feathering. I mean, I'm not saying those things are wrong. But you cannot get those things when you are powerless. Somebody called his mother, called him from Germany. My mother was in Ghana. He said, Kwame, this midnight, check the corner of your house. You see seven big ants. They are like your thumb. Is that, is that how they call you? Is this thumb? Thumb. Okay. It's what? Thumb. Thumb. Okay. Ghana is called thumb. That's how we call it. Joe is an Englishman. I'm not an Englishman. I'm not mad that you are going to force me to be an Englishman. As I said, I'm a bohok to. Amen. Now he said, Midnight, you see seven ants coming from the corner. Don't kill the first one, kill the six. Mommy, what I say, say, that's what I told you. Sitting down with a, a, a hockey stick, waiting. Truly, sudden, no hold there. It's all seven ants. In anger, he didn't spare all the seven. The first one was his mom. Immediately, the number said, Your mom and some aunties are going for funeral. They have accident. All of them has died. Hmm? When I was coming, the Lord told me something. And I'm going to tell you this evening. You can be sitting here, you are controlled from your village. Right. You can be sitting here in, in, in Britain. Yeah. And the control system is from Agbezo Mikleko. Right. It's from Doma Inkro. They press something. It's called monitoring spirit. The day you meet your destiny helper, they will divert your course. Yeah. 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 They will make sure the land will not accept you. What take people 10 months will take you 10 years. Why? You, there is no explanation why you should struggle. Have you noticed some girls, you meet them, you cannot explain why they are not married. Fear God, love God, gentle, beautiful, sober, know how to cook, but no man is coming. In a spiritual, men don't see you as a woman. Jesus says somebody, I see men like trees. Can you imagine? If Jesus left that man, you go to save the Baoba tree, cassava tree, he will be seeing people. Jesus touched him again because the man is going to see people wrongly. And if you don't see people the way God sees them, you will misdefine them. Yes. 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 We have problem with our spouse. We don't even know them. Can you imagine everybody was calling the man a murderer? And I near told Jesus, I should go and pray for the man, eyes to be open. If he's blind, blind him and kill him. This boy is our prayer point. You said we should go. No, no, no. And Anias was trying to question Jesus. Do you know the man that we should go and pray? 
because Ananias is not seeing Paul the way Jesus sees him. Hear this. If God listened to Ananias and kill Saul, we will not get Romans. We will not get Galatians. Look at your neighbor and say, give me time. I'm growing. Tell the person, hey, this, is not, this, is, this, is not, this is not my final death. Tell the person, God is working on me. And tell the person, I'm going to bring out something that will be a blessing to you and your children and your children and your children, children, children. Hey, receive grace to walk in sacrificial love. I have finished preaching. My time is actually up. Ten years. I, I made the mistake of marrying you. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. The greatest lesson I'm learning from faith is that confessions will be tested. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Everything God gives you is voice activated. When you open your mouth, be careful. Peter couldn't have denied Jesus if he didn't say, Master, wherever you die, I will die with you. When he made that statement, all the forces say, we will test you. Wow. Give your wife time to grow. The bar is not love your wife. If he ended the war, would have been fine. Love your wife as Christ loved the church, and you are one of the church. Yes, sir. Can you imagine you? Are you surprised that Jesus loves you? I, I, I'm too surprised. No, you should wake up and you should be able to say, I mean, I mean, I am sometimes surprised God has not given up on me. How many of you have ever felt that way? You do some dummy things, you sit down and congratulate yourself. Say, boy, this is really stupid, but congratulations. And Jesus never rejected any of us. What is even the state of this marriage? Love? No. 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 Sit down. I'll finish preaching. Sit down. Sit down. Should I stop? Eh. Come and take the microphone and continue. Hmm? English people like sitting down. So sit down. Ghana, we don't sit down. Got the economic system. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, can't pay the day. We don't. <laughs> Look, tell your neighbor, give me time. I'm growing. Tell the person, give me time. Don't conclude on me. Tell the person, don't crucify me. Don't. You know, a lady, a lady came to me at Port Test and said, It's over. It's over. I'm not interested in the marriage again. She was talking, blah, blah, blah. Look at her. What if I say, Lord, give me ways to tell her? Then the Lord dropped a rainbow in my spirit. I said, no, you have a right to live. If your will, I can't go. If God doesn't control your will, how would I control it? I said, but let me tell you something. How many years have you married? Did he say eight years or thereabout? And I said, what is the state? When you marry first, where were you living? He showed me some place. He said they were renting somebody's chamber home. I said, where are you living now? I said, oh, now by the grace of God, we are living in airport here or something. I said, you know, you can make any decision and walk away. But let me tell you, somebody just going to eat your harvest. Yes, Sometimes the devil's strategy is what you have labored for. He hand it over to somebody to eat it. Yes. If you marry a man that is nothing, and now the man has become somebody, and you say because of the man's mistake, you are walking away, somebody is just going to eat your harvest. And I told her, I said, one day you will feel this pain. I'm talking to you as a prophet. You'll be standing by the roadside, looking for a taxi or a Uber, and your husband will be driving in Range Rover with another woman. And that is your harvest. There are some of you already your harvest. Somebody's one feet is in it. He's going to eat it. Hmm. Hear this. I think something entered there. And I said, you can. And I said, you are talking about. So I asked him, why are you leaving? He said, prof. He said, daddy, one day. Uh, somebody came and said that he's going to leave his husband because he saw a condom in his pocket. So I, I asked him, did you ask the man how he got a condom came to his pocket? He said, I asked him, daddy. And I said, what did he say? He said, he was buying paracetamol. 
and I think the person mistakenly added the condom. I said, that is what he knows and that is the truth. What, what is your problem? Were you there when he was buying it? When the person was... Uh, I mean, uh, it was a mistake. He, he, he didn't know. The man said that. In fact, when he was taking the pastor more, he was talking to somebody. So the spoon picked the condom and entered the bag. Simple. Think about it. She didn't understand. Wait, 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 wait. I told the lady, I said, that's it. I said, every woman chasing your husband knows that he's married. Every woman knows they are married. One of the most dangerous pitches God did on, created on earth is a woman. I said, I told you much about They are very powerful. They are very dangerous. That is why God said, if you have not seen the father and the mother and pay something, don't take them. Don't even sleep with them when you are not paid out. They are too powerful. Even God is careful dealing with them. <laughs> if you change your face or you don't change, I will tell you. In fact, I read the Bible. I read the, the Bible never told us to be aware of the devil. He said we should be aware of women. <laughs> oh, yes. They are very powerful. Very powerful. Very, very powerful. That's why I said those of you, I told them, I said, the problem with the African man is that they don't know how to handle a woman. That is one of the cases on the African continent. We don't know how to handle a woman. We, we need to be schooled. And I'm not talking about going to Harvard. You have to go to the, the creator's manual for living. And find out who is this creature called woman. Whose voice can overpower the voice of God. Do you know in the universe, the only voice that overpowers the voice of God is a woman's voice. No other voice has ever tried. The animals couldn't handle it. The whales couldn't. Hippopotamus, elephant, none of them. Hmm. If one is sitting by you, watch, watch, watch her some way. And say, wow, I'm looking at power. Say, tell yourself. Power. Pastor Musa, the Lord said, Kwame Adam, all the fruit in the garden, eat it. One, don't touch it. This is God. This is Adam. Stand here. God, please, Mr. God, thank you for coming here. This is Eve. Watch this. Can I get apple? Somebody give me apple in your bag. Apple. Oh, this evening I will pray for you. You. Yeah. I, I will move you from Tanzania to a millionaire, yeah. and I can do that. Don't touch the fruit. Take it. Give it to Adam. No, no, don't just give it to him. <laughs> Say, eat it. <laughs> you know, when Adam took the fruit, eh? Adam took the fruit. Eh? Adam come here. was standing between the voice of God and the voice of his wife. Wow. This is the picture. When Adam was holding the fruit, and Lucy, this lady buy the fruit first. When he bite, he sin they didn't come to the well. Because he didn't get the instruction. So all Adam needed to do was not to bite it. That is why there are some things that don't expect a pastor to teach your wife. You yourself have to teach her. It's not my responsibility to teach your wife something. You have to train her. And there are some things you must reject it. You don't have to accept it. Adam could have told him, say, girl, where did you get this thing from? Please. Adam just was taking it from her and said, no, girl, don't eat this thing. It's no good. Come, go and shower and come. Just take a bath and come. And that, that, that. Adam took it. If by the fruit in front of the devil, sin didn't come to the well. So you can't even blame women for the trouble we are going through. 
if your marriage car crash, you the man, you are responsible. They don't want to hear the truth. So you are sitting down with your Akakabins and Barishos and Kuntashos. But I'm telling you the truth. No, if you, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Nothing can be done. I don't care where you went to school and that you can do anything. There are people who are more intellectual than you who have crashed. More educated than you, and they've messed up their life. This is a powerful woman. This is a powerful woman. Adam was standing between the two of them. This is God. This is Eve. Which side did Adam win? Hmm? That means that this one's voice overpowered this one's voice. Hello. Hi. Let's go deeper. God said, This is God. He said, Boy, I'm going to make you a descendant like the stars. I'm going to make you a great nation. This lady had to say, I saw you are talking to somebody. Who is that? <laughs> and so I was talking to God. What did he tell you? She said, My descendant, you. Follow me. Sarah told Abraham, God's only friend on earth, follow me. After God said, I'm good, he said, go to the tent. Hey, guys, there. You and God, you are confused. I want to help both of you. I'm living with you in a room. You are 100 years. For the past one year. Oda and Oda. And then you are saying that you are going to be what? Stars. What stars? When Abraham was entering Hagar's tent, she was standing between the voice of God and the voice of his wife. Which one won? Have you seen the lady you are living with that you don't respect? Be careful. Be closer with her. You think you are in Britain and you go to work, you come anyhow, anytime, and when you come, why are you late? Are you the one who gave birth to me? What kind of? You are digging your grave slowly. Digging your grave slowly. Because this thing we are dealing with is more spiritual than natural. It's more spiritual than natural. When you are dealing with a woman, you are dealing with a spirit. She has an incubator. Are you not afraid of the one that can carry God for nine months? Are you not afraid? Are you not afraid? Have you thought about it? Have you read the Bible? That God came and a woman carried her walk on her for nine months and pushed God. You are not spiritual, so you think that because you live in this environment and you have some nice car to drive, you have arrived. Who told you car threatening God? When you are talking, you don't want to listen. You no, 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 no. When you see a man kneeling down to give his wife water, he wants to live long. Simple. The man said that I want to live long. You check every man that loves his wife; they live very long. Very long. This girl managed to move this man to go and sleep with Hagar. I told you yesterday. Hey, the war in Gaza. Do you know the foundation? If you don't write it and I want to go home, write it. No sex is free. No, that is the greatest statement God told me. That is why none of them is free. If you go and commit adultery, don't think you are free. He can even give you food and give you transport. The tax masses of that sin, they are invisible. You can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. Wash your hand. You may lock the door, put on the light. Millions of demons are watching. It's not, it's no sex is secret and no sex is free. That is when your wife gets pregnant, everybody knows. You see her stomach coming down. What you did in a secret, God is putting it out. Even when you marry, it's not free. That is why you are still paying school fees. Don't do pay school fees. You are still paying. There's a man sitting there. 
you make your face like uh, Nebuchadnezzar. When I finish with you, you understand. I can see your pride is rising up. There's something about the spirit of pride. It's very something. I can pick it. I, me, I can pick it like this. And I can mention your name around and pull you to the front. Yes. Because if you're not ready to repent, that is why you see the devil start now. Nah, 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 nah. So, it's coming to kill you. I'm teaching you wisdom. You are talking. Do you know the power of a woman? Do you know the power of a woman? I told you yesterday that Samson was one man army. He was the only man in the Bible ruling the nation without soldier. God did he allow Samson to raise a military. Samson was more than 5,000 army. Because nobody can kill Samson except Samson. What is inside Samson, you can't kill him. The prophecy was coming from an angel. You are going to conceive. You are going to have a son. It's going to be a Nigerian. So something is a type of Christ because Jesus was a Nigerian. That is why I challenged some people and I told them that don't tell me that one Jesus Christ, the water he changed to one was an alcoholic one. Because one of the qualifications of a Nigerian is that they don't take in alcohol. And if you don't take it, you can't present one to people. There are very things we can, we can describe the Bible. We, we, you... you, you. <laughs> You mean some ignorant people? No, no, no. That's what the bottom line. Jesus was a Nazarene. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is Numbers chapter 6. That is why the Rastafarians used to do Rasta. So the Rastafarians, they don't like they don't like alcohol, but they like ganja. How many of you have smoked weed before? And you are still smoking? Please, can you wave your hand? Angel, I have clothes. You mean all of you? Nobody was a weed smoker. For what? Thank you, sir. You have delivered people. I can't preach again. You that is sitting there, what you The Rastafarians, that's what they do. Now, hear this. God told him that the way you lift the city gate, something took a jawbone of an axe and killed thousand soldiers. Armed with AK 47. Pa, 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 thousand dead. When he finished it, the thing that shocked me is that he threw it away. If it's our generation, a pastor will put a signboard. Job there is no guarantee that what God used said yesterday is going to use it today. Get a new anointing. We will put it in a room and worship it. Something threw it away. Something that killed thousand soldiers. Job of an axe. Killed thousand soldiers. When they wanted to end this life, they consulted a woman. God said the secret of the strength and the covenant is in your hair. The seven locks. Don't tell anybody. This woman. Where, where is your husband? You are not married yet. You are not married yet. When you get here, you get married. Amen. This woman put his hand on the man's head like this and say, hey, where is the strength? I said, she have a koha. And the woman took a scissors and shaved all the seven. And that was the end of Samson. A woman. That is why the principle is saying that if they are not your wife, don't touch them. A woman that have mercy on you is a woman you have dragged to the altar. The woman you carry to the altar is a one. Say that man of God and woman. God bless you. It's enough. I'll finish preaching. You have become so arrogant that nobody can talk about you. You close work and you come home after midnight. For what? What are you looking for? You want to go to hell because of a woman? How many sex can you have? No. Go and check centenarians. It is 80 to about 40. More women cross 100 than men. Because all our strength, we have given it to them. I checked the scripture by the way. The Bible says, Give not thy strength to women. It didn't say your wife. That means that any sexual affair outside the context of the marriage covenant, strength is being thrown away. But if you can sleep with your wife 10 times a day, there's grace to back you to continue doing. Give not thy strength to women, not to your wife. It's in the Bible. Go and read it. 
So there are some girls here, they are carrying some men's strength. The man is walking like this. His, his, his waist is like this. A woman is carrying his strength. He's walking. Flee yourself, man. Flee yourself. This is good. Today is Good Friday. Set yourself free. Nobody is judging you for the sins you did in the past, but we are concerned about the way you keep repeating. We are concerned about that. We don't have any judgment on you. Everybody has a past. Whether your past is good or bad, forget it. Everybody has a past. But the way you keep repeating, every four months, every four months is two months. Every two months you commit adultery. Two months is two months. Now you have reduced it to one month. Once a month. Come and wash your hands and come and lie down and you think that it's covered. Hey! Where? David was sleeping with Bathsheba. I learned something from it. Let me close with that. Do you know what I saw? I can imagine the demons go to God and knock God's door. The Lord said, I'm sleeping. Who is that? Say me, Satan. Lord, say, wake up, wake up. Devil, what is the problem? He said, come, Lord. Satan said, the man after your heart. <laughs> David was on the Do you know what God said? You have given the occasion for the enemies of God to blaspheme. So they went to God to blaspheme. So they wake God up and say, this is a man you publicly say is a man after my heart. Look at him. You think those things you are doing, do you know the significance in the spirit? Stand to your feet. I'll finish with you. You better come here this evening. And I won't come. It's the way you are going to preach. What should I come here and come and do? That you'll be preaching like this. I won't come for God. No, in the evening, it's anointing service. Can you promise me with a vow? I won't vow. This is what God said, David boy. I gave you wife, I gave you your master's wife, and if you want more, you should have come to tell me. You have given occasion for the enemies of God to blaspheme. So they went to God and said, There's so called man after your heart. Look at him on somebody's wife. And God shut everything down. You won't build a temple. Bible scholars said David could accomplish any great thing again so one woman can shut you down bam one woman shut something down shut David down may you not be the next online may the Lord deliver you sure mommy over the years this is what I've learned women are very unique Richard Pastor Paul when you commit a sin with a woman as I interview people eh, they will get over it quickly because of the softness of your heart. That means that you go and commit adultery with a woman of fornication. She can repent, get over it, and it's as if that thing didn't happen. But you, the man, 10 years you are struggling. There is no way Bathsheba prayed for forgiveness. David wrote a whole psalm. Have mercy on me according to your loving kindness. Multitude of your tender mercy. Let Bathsheba was like ruling Israel. He controlled Solomon. Solomon built the throne for him. When Solomon saw his mother coming, he stood up and prostrate. Why says king? I don't have time to take you to that scripture. And anointing for don't you see the way he touch women? Because they, they can they can give God access. I'm telling you spiritual. If you are canna, you get confused. Everything I'm telling Come this way. I'm going to tell you. Good Friday is hope. Save yourself. Save yourself. There's a place you labor to enter into is rest. Save yourself. No. You can do one, you can commit one sin and pay for five thousand years. You can die and go a generation. Abraham slept with Hagar. Generations are paying. Generations are paying. One sex and you see. You see, hmm, when the covenant players make mistakes, goes very high. Jesus Christ. God see the covenant of David with, the Bible said that the covenant was see with salt. As long as people eat salt. That's why Jesus was even called the son of David. Keep yourself full and save yourself. I'm helping you. Listen. 
Paul talks about peace which passes all understanding. When you miss that thing, Christianity is meaningless. You'll be sitting in church pretending you are fine, but you are not. And I love the sincerity of David. Oh, the way we can fake it. Everybody was coming and bowing. Long live king. Nana. But the guy knows the Holy Ghost has left him. So do you know what he's telling God? You can take the truth. You can take the fame, but don't take your spirit from me. It is that that spirit on him is the reason why Saul couldn't kill him. Yes. Now let me give you, let me let me break it down. If the prime minister of Britain, plus the whole army, including MI5, is looking for you, where is your escape place? Can you imagine one president and his whole army is looking for one man and they couldn't kill him? Yes. It has to do with God's defense. Yes. Why will you escape? When the David told so he said, You are chasing a fly. I am a fly. And once now, I am a fly. Compared to what you carry, who is me? That spirit that is defending you, that thing that the devil named it, when Satan shot his arrows towards Job and he couldn't penetrate. It is not God that told us that thing is called hedge. It's Satan that told us. Yeah. Have you not make a hedge? How did he know? If you carry the protest, Satan knows it. If you lose it, he knows it. Have you not make a hedge? God didn't tell us that thing is called hedge. Satan gave it a name. You stand there with an aristocratic face and look at me some way. I see some man standing there. We see Sinawa and say, You might not be able to straighten it again. You better stop. And the power of God is saying, you Humble yourself. Very simple. I have seen people who are so. I, I was preaching, I was a man. The Lord told me, Say, This man's arrogant. Committing adultery and being arrogant. What is he preaching? He doesn't have a message. He died. He died unexplainable death. Kings has fallen and they have lied portrait. The Bible says David removed the kingship garment and put a sackcloth and ashes on him and pleading with God. You are not a king, you are not even a veterinary officer, and you are oh yes. They are doctors and they are veterinary. You are just sitting there and that. No, look. Some of you are sitting here in Britain. Look at where you come from. Do you know, Pastor Paul, one of the things that are the mysteries are, as I travel over the world. Some people have traveled from God has relocated them by once God divine orchestration and he has brought them to a place London, Germany, America and blessed them and they've forgotten where they come from. You could see their arrogance, you could see that the refuge, he has forgotten that you come from a tribal person. We cross this with rest before we come. Your hometown can't go there once a day. <laughs> Give the Lord a clap of when I'm preaching. You take you come here to come and pamper you and go where? This boy here, I have never forgotten where I'm coming from. Hey, it's dangerous. God keep warning us, remember, 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 remember. When you get to the land and you have eaten and you are full, remember. Now listen, today you are driving a car in Britain that nobody in your family has ever driven such a car. Who in your family drove a Mercedes Benz? Who in your family drove the car you drove? But you are forgotten. Why didn't God pick your cousin but he picked you? You better meet me here this evening. Yes, hey, I won't come. I really wanted to come, but the way you are talking, if that's the way you are going to continue preaching, then stay with your service. I will stay with my service. Yesterday you didn't come. Didn't we have the service? Can't you see the way I'm helping you? You want to legalize a Jamai. And you want to come to church that we should accept you. Hey! Happy. Come and take your time. I know where you God knows where you come from. Yeah? And you see, when you start your pride, the enemies will God will remember you. He told so when that was little in your own eyes, I call you. So the day you call him, the guy was have a, I mean what a low self-esteem. And God called you. So God will remind you where you were. Humble yourself. 
go back and love your wife and stop that kakabinsa and the pride and the and contentious and barry why you barry some money you made the lord lose you to become simon give the lord a clap of and i'm preaching okay. what are you talking about I'll finish that will be your song that will be your song that will be your song i am the one you have shown me mercy you know where i'm standing you God have shown me mercy, me mercy. Hey. At your mother's children you are in UK your sister is in America your brother is in Germany and all your auntie's children have become useless because of witchcraft because your auntie now is not correct even the enviness around your mother is God's preservation that has kept you listen humble yourself And everywhere I go and I sense pride. If you are in this church, you have pride, you have a problem. Because you have a father and a mother that is down to earth. Hey, boy. Boy. Come to me. How old are you? Eight. Come, 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 come. 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 And you see, Professor, nobody's professor to anybody here. Open it, come. Come. Boy, I'm going to give you something. Eh? Stand here. A man is quiet. I want you to force yourself, cross this man eh, and come to me. I'm going to give you something. Force yourself, push him. Push him, push him and come. Force, 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 force. Push him. Oh boy, be strong, be strong. Now. Wait. God resists the pride. So you see, what will this guy do to cross this man? When you are proud, God doesn't send the devil. He comes to stand in front of Jesus. You. This is the demonstration of how God deals with proud people. You want to cross, but God says, I'm the one standing. I'm not even sending the devil. This is a picture. So God resists the pride, not the devil. What will this small boy do to cross this man? Don't forget this demonstration. Talking to your wife anyhow, insulting her anyhow. Have you seen the way God has carried him? Is he taking him away? Oh Jesus! Oh Allah! You will resist the pride. He give more grace to them. So when you walk in arrogance and pride god come to stand in front of you you will force you will study you will labor you will work but nothing to produce because it's not the devil that is fighting you there is a scripture you like causing if god be for you who can be against you? if god is also against you who can be for you think about it quote scripture vice versa Look at a man and say, I perceive this message is for you. Tell a man. Look at that. Tell a man, say, You. Say, You are the reason the prophet is preaching this. Okay? Let me tell you how my prophetic instinct work. I can go to a service and the Lord will tell me the spirit that is operating. I prophesy to preaching than calling people. Straight. I can come and stand by you, and when I pick your spirit, the message will change. Because if the word doesn't change you, nothing will change you. Look at a man and tell the man, go back and love your wife. I know the man is going to say that I'm not married. Okay, wait. 
One day, I was telling them that the Bible said there will be, when Jesus came, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. A man came to me and said, I don't have teeth. What is going to happen? I said, there will be weeping and gnashing of gum. If you don't have teeth, you will gnash your gum. Whichever one, there will be a gnash. Listen to me. Don't propose to three girls. Hey. Esther, Jane, and Rebecca. They will kill you. It is a, a polygamy on a rehearsal. Responsibility is a price for greatness. You cannot be trusted. For you to tell two girls at the same time you marry them, it shows where you are going. Explain to me why you are quiet. Today, there are people in church, what they will do, the devil won't try it. No, there are people in church, Satan is afraid of them. What you do, Satan won't try it. Pastor Paul, a young pastor came to me in Port I have to put him for 14 days. He is sleeping with his wife and his wife, junior sister. And forget about the pastor. When the wife, junior sister, trap him, the girl asks him in bed, Me and my sister, who is better? Bay four. Some things you won't do. If you see anybody who has folded their hands, they are suspects. They are thinking too much. They, they, are, they, are, they, are, they could see that what I'm preaching is about them. If you see them, they are standing like this. And especially they are not blinking their eye and they are very quiet. Today. let's go back to the bible today is good friday let's walk in the fear of god this is what I was, I was going to tell you the seven statement that was made on the cross seven maybe tomorrow morning i'll preach it everything about god seven is the end of a cycle hmm? on the seventh day god rested elijah prayed seven times before god sent the rain they have to go around Jericho seven times. Do you know why the fire couldn't kill Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Nebuchadnezzar heated it seven times. So he died God's number. And seven statements were made at the cross of Calvary. Seven. I'll preach it to you. Seven statements. One of them is I test. And the one I love most is it is finished. Yes. It is finished. Seven statement on the cross. Go back to the world. If you are here and have preached anything that concerns you, stop arrogance, humble yourself. Don't go and tell your wife all the things you have done. If you didn't see it, keep it in your pocket and be walking cool. As if nothing has happened. Huh? If I want to go, rather tell the wife that the, the man he, he can preach. I like the way he preach, pal. And even try to make talk things like I don't know why some men do things like that. So that your mind, your wife's mind will, will not be that you are the one doing. So tell your wife. Some so do some men really commit adultery and you are talking about yourself, but don't let him know that you are the one you are talking. Yeah. There was one stupid girl. Who, <laughs> who is married to an associate pastor and he started talking to his ex-boyfriend and took a naked picture and sent it to the marriage broke it, and said those of you listen to me heard me talk about it, and sent it to his ex-boyfriend but he's, the reason he's stupid is that he's not smart like you if it were to be you you would delete it i love him man he went to delete it The young girl, why are you not answering me? I said, won't you delete it? Ah! What kind of... You, you're making me feel lonely like you. I don't know what I'm talking about. Do you know the things you have deleted? She was a fool. She was not smart. And the husband found it. 
the marriage is broken and that is why Pastor Musa, when they come back the Lord told me never judge from one witness when the lady came to talk about it I almost judged the guy call me your husband what kind of nonsense is that and you marry a young girl and you are not sleeping he said my husband has moved to a hotel he didn't she didn't tell me and the complications are when the guy was talking Christ said papa I even love my wife what is at least naked picture let's assume he has gone to labor or to deliver or anything yeah nobody no no when when we see women in labor war you see i was talking to a, a medical officer and he's a urologist and he, he came to church and i asked him that do we have women urologists he said yes we had to say hey wow and they examine men and they say yes but he's asked him to say he said he said prof when you are sick you don't care who is watching yeah, yeah. If you really it's like a woman in a labor ward you don't care your nakedness no 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 you don't care i've been there three times to observe my wife my wife was giving birth a woman was walking the ah he he took he dropped his hand and said crouching for me under when man i was hey the midwife told me prof you have to leave your here when you come here you see. i i got out of there. i was shocked they said i should pick the thing for <laughs> that day i learned a lesson in my life that i would never no bible school can teach me that lesson. He was walking her. Hey, Jesus, hey. Mm, mm, mm. Some of you were insulting their husband. The villagers say, foolish man, this guy will make coups. How come he will? Come in there. Labor what? It's like, I'm that is what, where, one of the ways you love your wife is when he's in labor, you are there. Whether caesarean or natural, you will respect her. If you have the Holy Ghost inside you and you are a human being, and you didn't come from a tree and you see a woman delivering and you can beat her you are mad you see a woman giving birth the process my wife was giving birth to her husband she went off bam labor three days bam he went off i saw the doctor say bring bring oxygen come hurry up Sin. I said, hey, I was standing as a kudaba, kuru, kudaba. Even the tongues is not correct. You can't, you don't know the kind of tongues you are, you are speaking. I realized I was speaking strange tongues. Get the opportunity to be whether it's caesarean session or natural. If you see the process, sure. Even when my wife delivered, I was not thinking about the baby. I was looking at her. In fact, anytime you are trying to suck her from the house, when that picture comes, you will repent. So if you have not had experiences in your life, so you, be, you behave the way you behave. For a woman to go to labor ward and come back is a miracle. Miracle! What came from God's mouth is that in pain you will deliver a child. It's a curse from the Lord to take Christ to reverse it. It's not an easy thing. A pastor was telling me when he lost one of the girls just before I was coming here. He said, Papa, he delivered. Everything was fine. Suddenly he went off. He never came back. Never came back. And the doc, one doctor told me, he said, Papa, he said, Prof, sometimes there is no scientific reason why somebody should die. We cannot explain it medically why this person should die, but they die. Lift up your holy hands. Pray for God to give you grace. 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 Help me to be the best I can be for you, Lord. Oh, Lift up your voice and pray that prayer. Wherever you are, wherever you are, lift your two and Lord Oh Jesus, 
Grace will be the best we can be for His grace, grace. Come on, I'm the one. You have shown me, man. Lift your voice and sing it as you are closing. Jesus said. That from January to now, the Lord has shown you mercy. How did we make it from January 1st to now? With all humility, lift up your two hands, open your mouth, and sing this song for 60 seconds while you are closing. That's a sin again. You are who has found sins. I give the shame. You love me. You love me. You love me. You love me. I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one that you are showing me mercy. You are showing me mercy. You are showing. Father's house, and all of you are my brothers and sisters. And God sent me here. There are other people. I can come and do a program for TBC anytime. If I would call me and say, Nana, I want you to come, I'll come. But it's not every church I can preach. There are two churches probably standing order Pastor Paul, and here I can come. But there are other people. So sometimes, and I see them come to Portis. They come. Every time we are doing fasting, you see somebody. Highly do we do fasting that you won't get people from all over the world coming. And so I want the TBC to people come and support and join me, be a blessing to other people. Yes. There are people go to Catholic. There are people go to church. They don't have access to the things you have access to. And they are also children of God. Amen. I appreciate it. One of the things I'll. I honor so much that sometimes I come here. Pastor Paul will shut down all. He was in America because of me. He traveled to come here. He left and came and his wife. I mean, I don't know why my mother didn't become a white woman to just go and marry his father so that would be the same brothers or something. I don't know what that, well, I don't know what my mother was looking for. I want you to come this evening because you are going to cut something. Where we are going here, where we are going, let me read something to you. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise and shine. Your light has come. And the glory. You love that scripture. But you read the New Living in Translation. Listen to me. It's a prophetic word. Do you know that the prophecies that was given in the Bible, eh, over 90 plus percent has been fulfilled. So it shows that Jesus is coming very soon. Arise, Jerusalem. Let your light shine for, for all to see. For your glory, for the glory of the Lord. Right? This is a commentary. God, go to the next verse. Let me show you. That is what I want to show you. The next verse. Hold on. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth. This is where we are now. Gross darkness and gross darkness the people but the Lord. For behold darkness shall cover what? The earth. Give me the New Living Translation. That is what I said. I remember I said that. Darkness as black as night covers what? Oh, so there is no way for greener pastures. No. Running to Britain is not, unless God say go. If God is not the one that's saying go. There is nothing in the land of Israel that showed there's milk and honey. The only thing that makes the land produce is what God said. It's rocks, it's stones. But it's only God who can say a stone produces milk and it starts producing milk. So if God does not say run to Manchester, stay here. 
Sometimes don't even get another job because I let you pay rice. You go there, God will collapse the company. As many as are led, as many as are led. Oh, let me find this before. But is, as many as are led. At least God will not choose a wife for you, but pray until you are led. Because not every woman you can be compatible with. And you cannot marry for where you are. You have to marry for where you are going. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. There are some young girls, they can be suitable for the first four years. But when you move to another realm, they will be a caricature. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. There are some young ladies in the church, they have a call of God on their life. And they never consider that it's a call of God. They marry somebody who didn't like God's calling. And it has shut down their ministry completely. Some of them were mistress. They start producing songs. They are nowhere to be found. Because they didn't marry for where they are going. So having a music ministry that's not me, you marry a guy. Don't look at his car. Look at his heart. And find the fruits. Get the fruit. Get the source of where he's coming from. Amen. What kind of training has he received? If you go to a, girl, a guy's house and he's beating his sister, it's a rehearsal of what he's going to face. Don't lie. Darkness shall cover the earth. Tell your neighbor, darkness, darkness. So you need anointing. So come and catch something. This evening, when you come here, you are sick, you'll be healed. You'll be delivered. You'll be rescued. Amen. We are starting the meeting at 7 o'clock. And it will go a little after midnight. So get ready. Don't go and park somewhere that when we are ministering that you run to go and repark your car. If you come and you don't park it, park on top of somebody's car. I don't know how you are going to do it, but find a way to do it. I'm just said I learned a lesson. Even potters, when I go back, I'm going to put time in on the parking. I'm learning a lesson, pa. I'm learning a lesson. That, uh, can you imagine all those parking Jubilee Tabernacle? Everybody's paying parking. I say, mm. Am I on air? I didn't say that too. I just come and receive from the Lord. You'll be blessed. This evening, I'm going to lay hands on everybody, prophesy to people as the Lord give me grace. And some of you, uh, it is possible your next level is in my mouth. And when I release that word, it will take you there. Listen, I told you. Where is Abby? Huh? Okay. Yeah. Pastor Paul's daughter. She was seven years. When I prophesy, he's going to be a medical doctor. At seven years, God show me the girl will be a doctor. Today he's in a medical school. Seven years old. She didn't have any interest in anything. I saw it. It's called advanced knowledge. It's called oversight. Once I prophesy you'll be a millionaire, no devil can stop the money from coming to you. No. 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 You know the reason why Saul couldn't kill David? Yes, there's a prophecy is going to be a king. And if Saul kill him, God has lied. So God must defend him because of the prophetic word. So when there's a prophetic word on your life, you are unkillable. Yes, sir. The Lord favor you. Amen. And the Lord bless you. Let's welcome Pastor Amen. Musa. Put your hands together. Welcome God's servant. Give the Lord a shout to us. You welcome God's servant. If your neighbor is shouting louder than you, hey. your money has been transferred to his account. Hey. Welcome, God servant. Bless you, sir. TBC, I love you. I'll see you in the evening. Oh, come on, give it to God. If you're, if it is about God, then give it, give it, give it, give it. Hallelujah. Please be seated for a few minutes. I promise you, within the next five, ten minutes, we'll be out of here. But uh, there is something we need to do. On oh, what uh, prophetic anointing we have received now? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and some of the things we have heard today, God unhinging the secrets that are hidden and setting you loose because of the truth of God. Somebody must celebrate God now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Quickly, 
there is something that we do here uh, we called Blessing Fund. And on Easter Day, we remember the poor. Uh, Jesus said something. You know, after the Council of Jerusalem, and they have talked about grace, and the Jerusalem church agreed with the worldwide church that uh, the Gentiles come into God's presence by grace only. They added something that but tell the Gentile church not to forget the poor. Jesus said the poor will always be with us. And I think that uh, over these few days, I've been to hospitals and I've seen the need in hospitals and so forth. And occasions like this, sometimes we support uh, the work of some of the hospitals that we really cherish, particularly, uh, is it Great Oman? Yes. And also sometimes we support um, yeah, uh, students who are pursuing courses uh, to be trained in the kingdom. So we want to take a blessing fund. We are remembering the poor, we are remembering the sick, and as we do that, and as you do that for somebody, God is also looking at you and your vulnerabilities and the times you are vulnerable, God will send somebody to come and meet your need. So please, uh, if you are giving online, just say blessing fund as a reference. Uh, we will leave the bowls here, and if you are giving cash, check, whatever it is, please, as the sun goes out, we come and uh, we're dancing to bless the Lord, and as we bless the Lord, we are remembering the poor too. Is that okay? Yes, the Lord favor you as you favor the poor, as you favor the sick, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please. I stand amazed in your presence. There is nothing you cannot do. I stand amazed in your own presence. There is joy, peace, and hope. Hey, there's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like
hope everyone enjoyed the service. God bless you guys so much. Uh, first and foremost, on the behalf of the youth leadership, we just like to say a very big thank you to all the grandparents, all the moms, all the dads, all the aunties, uncles, our brothers and sisters, for each and every single person that supported the youth for retreat last year. Give a clap for yourselves, give a round of applause for yourselves. We just like to say, literally, God bless each and every single one of you for your contribution and for your support. We really do appreciate you. Now, I know NK usually stands here, but now I'm standing here. Amen? Amen. So, um, family, I'd just like to just promote our youth retreat 2024. Hey. Youth retreat 2024. Now, look at this amazing flight. Look at how many people attend, how many youths attended youth retreat in 2023. There was about 80 youths. And we want about 100 or 120 youths this year. So this year, um, Youth Retreat is from the 17th to the 21st of August, from Saturday to Wednesday. And family, if you've got any sons or daughters, any nephews, nieces, please, if you can just scan the QR code, just scan it for them from the ages of 13 to 18 so that they can come to Youth Retreat and be blessed. We're also pleading um, with all humility for anyone that would like to sponsor or contribute to this year's youth retreat. Please, please, please. We can see it's £229. Amen? Amen. I like that. Amen. So please, how, how many you are able to contribute, please, please, please do contribute. I will literally be at the reception at the front waiting for you guys to make payment. If you're not able to pay today, don't worry. You can make payments, installments, and please, um, I know that you bless a youth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, family, and God bless you for your support once again. Amen, family. Praise the Lord. Please, let's stand together. Stand together. Let's stand together. Just stand together, tell your neighbor, it has been wonderful sitting by you. <laughs> oh, tell them what a service. Oh, what a service. Did you feel God in this room? Did you feel God in this room? Hallelujah. Tell them, this is Easter Friday. It is finished. Jesus Christ. Any sin that you have ever committed was finished on the cross. As you go out, if you are humble, your past is forgiven. Oh, I said your past is what? I said your past is what? You are entering into a new phase. Oh, tell your neighbor, you are entering into a new phase of God's grace, God's amazing love, as you go forward, miracles are going to happen in your life. The joy of the Lord will be your strength. Amazing miracles will happen in your life. You will achieve your purpose for the glory and for the honor of God. You will not be the same again. Because you encountered the glory of God on the Good Friday. Let's share the grace and favor of God together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. Don't forget, tonight, seven.